G'day guys, welcome back to the True Footy YouTube channel for an early look at this upcoming draft. Why am I talking about the draft so early? Well, obviously, because I'm a West Coast Eagles fan and that is the only possible exciting outcome from this year for us. Now, I'm only joking, of course. Um, I am a huge draft lover. If you've been watching the channel for a while, um, I do follow it. I'm certainly not a top tier, like amateur sort of analyst. You can find heaps of those across the internet. But I guess in today's video, what I'm trying to do is kind of collate a lot of information that I've learned and, and watched through highlights to uh, give you a bit of a snapshot at what the sort of consensus is about the ratings and give you a little bit of information um, to make it easier for you guys. Naturally, if you support a club that's uh, probably not gonna make finals this year, then your interest level might, in the draft might uh, be higher than usual anyway. So the good thing about this draft is as a little bit of a, a background is the fact that it's meant to be quite a lot deeper than previous drafts. So every year we hear the term super draft um, and you know we, we can't really assess what a super draft is until 10 years after the fact. So what we can say though is that generally speaking, the depth of this draft, is, and that's usually what indicates the quality of a draft, is a lot deeper than previous years, in particular last year. And I've heard some people close to the action uh, um, I've read former recruiters even say that a pick around 40 this year might even be better than a pick in the early 20s last year. So that gives you some indication as to the depth of talent. We also have potentially the best number one prospect ever in Harley Reid. There's been plenty of content, both by myself and others, on how good he is. And the other interesting thing about this year is that we are pre-championships, so things will change. But there seems to be a lack of midfielders, whereas in previous years it felt like the midfielders would be the dominant position of a draft. This year seems to be more utility players, uh, key position forwards, which is nice. Some drafts you're completely bereft of talls. And also some just general sort of medium utility types that, uh, or even just genuine small forwards and medium forwards. So that's a little bit of a, a snapshot as to what the draft looks like now. Bearing in mind, things will change after the championships and I'm sure I'll be doing another video like this. But in today's video, we're gonna talk about uh, the top 10 prospects. It's a little bit arbitrary. I'm kind of pulled together my own opinion and trying to get a consensus of what others are saying. And I'm gonna talk about the top 10 prospects in no particular order, but give you a little bit of a profile of each one. Before we get into it, I do need to highlight that this video is sponsored by manscaped.com. For all your male grooming needs, if you are a man that likes to manscape and keep everything tidy down here, then manscaped.com is a great place for you to go and browse and have a look at what they have. They've got the Lawnmower 4.0. It's a ceramic bladed waterproof body hair trimmer. They've got the Weed Whacker, which does your nose hair and your ear hair as well. If that's a problem for you, then it's a great little product. And then other things like moisturizers and, and ball deodorants and stuff like that. Everything you can possibly imagine related to manscaping, you can find on their website and you get 20% off and free shipping by using the code TRUEFOOTY20. So that's a nice little bonus for you for watching True Footy over the years. Get a nice discount every time you buy something from manscaped.com. But anyway, let's crack into the video. So we're gonna start off with the, uh, the consensus number one pick right now, and it's unlikely to change uh, come the end of the year, but I suppose nothing's impossible. But we're talking about Harley Reid here. So if you have any interest in the draft, you already know who this kid is, but he's 185 centimeter, 85 kilo, general utility. And the thing that stands about, out about Harley Reid is he just looks like a men against boys. And that was true last year as an underager. He caught the eye last year. People were saying that he could potentially go top one or two in last year's draft, even despite being a year younger. And that belief hasn't really changed. He's one of the most dominant juniors that we've potentially ever seen. So much so that uh, he's actually getting games in the VFL now because I think he's reached a point now where he can only prove so much more against 18 year olds. He played for Carlton's VFL side. He played against Port Adelaide's uh, Sandfall side as well. And uh, in his Carlton debut, he, he got like 13 touches or something like that. So it was interesting to see him exposed a little bit to players that he doesn't have a physical advantage over. So the thing about Reed is that he's been bullying 18 year old kids and you know he's got great skills and great awareness too. He really is a complete player. But the only question mark will be, how does he do it against players where he's not physically strong and I think at AFL level, he will eventually have that advantage, but it might take him three years to get there. There's also working out what his best position is. I could see him playing AFL early and playing a bit of a sheasel role, more as a running defender, because he's great at that. He has the skills to do it. He could play as a high marking forward. He's a great contested mark. Um, and eventually I think he will evolve into a midfielder. Then at number two, again, this is no particular order, but uh, I'm gonna go with Nick Watson. Now it's rare to see a player this early in draft calculations be only 170 centimeters and 69 kilos, but that is how talented this kid is. He's kind of a small forward, um, but he's proven in recent in recent times that he can play in the midfield and also find plenty of the footy, which is really impressive. So last year he kicked 18 goals from seven games, 
for I think it was the Eastern Rangers in the um, the under 18s comp as an underager as well. But in recent times, he's proven he can play in the midfield. He can play a little bit of halfback. I think he had one game where he had 34 touches and kicked a couple of goals as well. So he can accumulate the ball. He's got great skills. He can hit the scoreboard as well. He's kind of the full package. It's just that he's a little bit short. So at AFL level, will it translate? I don't know. But you know, we saw it with Caleb Daniel. He's taller than Caleb Daniel. The fact that he is 170 centimeters and being talked about as a top two to top five prospect shows how talented this kid is. In third, we have Zane Durr who is the brother of Xavier Dersma at Port Adelaide and a different style of player, no doubt. He's about 189 centimeters right now. And just as an aside, players are gonna grow two to three centimeters by the end of the year anyway. So that's his current height as I understand it. He's more of a forward half player, a bit more of a third tall marking forward who can roll through the midfield. And that's the next part of his development is to prove that he can do it as a midfielder. He's got all the class and skill, but he needs to continue to demonstrate a contested side as well. He's a very good athlete. He's been compared by some to someone like a uh, a Bailey Fritch as a forward. So if he can demonstrate an ability to win the football and win his own ball in a contested manner, then he's potentially a top two prospect. Then you've got Daniel Curtin from Western Australia as uh, probably the first or at least second um, sort of key position player in this upcoming draft. And I think he kind of made a name for himself. He won the medal for best on ground in the AFL Futures uh, grand final curtain raiser last year as well. And this year started the year up forward for Claremont as well. So uh, off Often with these tools, you kind of develop them in one role and then usually in their draft year, they sort of move around to prove they can play in multiple positions. It does appear that he's more like a, a strong marking, skillful and uh, reasonably agile defender. But if he can add a few strings to his bow as a forward, he could potentially go, you know, top two to three as well. There was one game in the wet where I think he played in the midfield. He had like 26 touches. Uh, didn't see the game. It might be one of those scrappy games as well. But is there a chance he becomes an em enormous midfielder? Maybe. Then you've got the first probably genuine true key forward of this draft pool in Archer Reed, who is Zach Reed's brother from Essendon. He's currently measuring at 203 centimeters. So genuine ruckman height. In fact, taller than a lot of rucks in the AFL. Um, and you can imagine he'd probably get to that two six mark potentially he's got a huge wingspan he's a great athlete great endurance good forward craft as well for a tall guy a neat set shot as well he can take a grab he's got a lot of potential particularly if he really fills out and reaches that height of 206 207 bit of a raw prospect but for a team who could potentially need a key forward early in the draft i think you know north melbourne and west coast come to mind he could potentially go quite early. Then there's Colby McKercher, who I think is the first genuine midfielder that I'm gonna name here, a Tasmanian prospect. He's 181 centimeters currently, so on the smaller side for a modern day midfielder, but he's very classy, balanced midfielder. He's not afraid of his own ball, but can certainly win it on the outside and knows where the goals are as well. So his stocks are genuinely rising. I think there was a game, I forget specifically the opponent, it might've been the Sandful Port Adelaide side that they played against um, where he was one of the best midfielders on the field. So he's got clean hands, he's got good skills, he can find his own ball. Um, so as far as pure mids go, he's one of the best in this draft. It'd be interesting to see with a Tasmanian factor, whether some teams are reluctant to pick him up because as a Tasmanian, he want, might want to play for Tassie in a few years. So it'll be interesting to see where he goes in this draft. Then you've got Jed Walter, who is a Gold Coast Academy player, um, who is 194 centimetre key forward in this guy. Seems like a sure thing. As far as uh, you know, 18 year old key forwards go, there's no such thing as a sure thing. But this kid seems incredibly talented and Gold Coast will be in an awkward position where their first pick I think is like six or seven currently and he's a chance to get bid on before that. So they might do some strategical moves where they trade out that pick and try and get an earlier one. We'll see what happens. But I expect some funny business from Gold Coast this year because Jed Walter will likely go in the top half a dozen picks potentially. He's a great athlete. He's very fast, um, very aggressive as well, T chases and tackles for a key forward, which is a, a great sign. Pretty traditional as a markup and lead style key forward as well, and potentially a great partner to Ben King in the future years. Now we've got the third relation to an existing AFL player uh, in this video is Nate Caddy, uh, whose stocks are rising at the moment. So he's officially on paper, I think 192 centimeters and 91 kilos as a uh, sort of undersized key forward, but his strength and his contested game, his high leap is what keeps him relevant and potentially a top 10 player. So another player who, if he grows to about 195 centimeters, you know, potentially he goes as the first tall picked in this draft. Nate Caddy, I uh, forgot to say, is uh, Josh Caddy's nephew. I think. He's likely to be Vic Metro's um, focal point in attack this year 
And uh, as I said, with his high marking, his vertical leap, his contested game, um, there's a lot of upside there for Nate Caddy. He probably just wants to grow a few centimeters before he goes really high in this year's draft. But he's already made his VFL debut along Harley Reid and I think Zane Dersma as well, playing for Carlton, which shows that he's relatively ready-made. In number nine, I've got Ashton Moyer from South Australia, who is an 188 centimeter, 84 kilo forward. Um, now this guy is sliding down uh, the consensus rankings a little bit. And as an outsider, I don't really know how justified that is. I think there's been a few chances for him to showcase his skills in that Australian junior side that, that played against men. But from what I understand, he's a mercurial, skillful forward and the conditions haven't been ideal for him, which should be taken into account for sure. But I think on talent, he goes certainly in the top 10. The cool thing about Moya uh, that's been talked about a lot is that this kid to a greater extent than we've seen from any prospect that I can remember. He's perfectly ambidextrous of both sides of his body, and I think there's even been cases where he's taken set shots off both sides. He's really evasive, really skillful, hits the scoreboard, so a great finishing style forward for a team, which might suggest that if he doesn't add a bit of a midfield string to his bow or show like really strong contested traits, then he's unlikely to go in the top five. But very, very talented player, and I would be very happy if West Coast ended up with him. Maybe not a pick one or two, but certainly, you know, past pick five. And number 10, the final player I'll mention in these uh, rankings is a player called Darcy Wilson, who's kind of shot to prominence in recent weeks, really bolted as it were. He's a 185 centimeter. He's kind of a utility, but he's kind of also an outside midfielder. Um, he's got a bag of tricks. He's got some serious craft and he's hitting the scoreboard as well. So very, very classy outside player, very dangerous and Played for the AFL Academy side uh, a number of weeks ago and in wet, tough conditions, he was one of their best to feel. The thing that sets uh, Wilson apart as this fast and classy, skillful outside player is his composure. So his ability to hit targets while running at full speed, which is a very, very important trait, particularly in the modern game. So I don't know where about this kid ends up, but he shot into my personal top 10. I'm very excited to see where he goes. He could potentially go top five. But there you go, guys. That is my uh, insight into the top 10 prospects. And there's, there's probably, you know, the next six to eight players that worthy of that 10th, 8th, ninth spot, whatever. But that's just my snapshot. Um, there's plenty of other places to find increasing detail over these players. But like I said, national championships haven't happened yet. And, you know, in particular, we see, we see some tolls uh, bolt throughout the course of the year because they're still going through their development process in terms of, you know, what position on their ground is the best for them. They're being thrown around the field and also growth spurts happen and, you know, players putting on weight over the course of the year. So like I said, this Nate Caddy example, 192 centimeters now at 195 come uh, the draft camp, he suddenly becomes a top five prospect. But it's all very interesting. Uh, I can't help but be into it at the moment because as an Eagles fan, not a whole lot going on on field for us at the moment. But hope you enjoyed that little insight, guys. Let me know in the comments what you, uh, I guess, if you follow the draft, what you agree with and what you disagree with and uh, which players you want your club to potentially pick up at the end of the year. But hope you're doing well, guys. Like the video if you enjoyed it. If you don't mind, subscribe to the channel if you're new and I'll see you in the next one. Cheers.